you that uh, are already watching. And uh, I, I want to premise what that survey is going to be. So, um, Hamp, I know uh, one conference just got canceled. You're going to be anywhere coming up soon if somebody wanted to see you? Yeah, no, I'm going to be staying right here and doing appraisals. My stack is thick and not traveling for a little while here. Okay. So, what about you, Melissa? I know you're all over the place. Um, well, what's your, what's your schedule? Think, um, let's see. Oh, I think I lost you. We no, I'm here. We're here. Uh, okay, there we go. Let me get the right mouse going here. Okay, um, immediate schedule. Um, let me give you April. That's easy. All um, right. Two locations in Louisiana, Baton Rouge and the New Orleans Kenner area. And then, uh, of course, the Axe Conference in April. Yeah. They say yeah. Louis. Yeah, we're excited about that, you know, uh, um, and, and this is public record, and I, and I told uh, Jim I would, I would make an announcement, uh, Valuation Expo has been postponed. Yes. Uh, not, not, not canceled, just postponed. They're, uh, they're going to move that out a few months. I believe they're going to reschedule that for July, and, and part of that is because of, you know, the coronavirus and everything happening with that. Uh, a lot of the, the corporate folks are saying, you know, we're not going to send our people. And, uh, and, and I certainly can understand that. Yeah, I, th I don't think we can live in fear, but we, we need to be careful. And, and these, you know, what they're, what they're recommending that we do, we probably should already be doing, right? I'm a, I'm a wash my hands kind of freak anyway. I mean, I do that all the time. Um, and, uh, and so that's nothing new for me. But, uh, well, it is 10 o'clock. Ben, are we good to go? Yes. Okay. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna wait a few minutes. I don't know how many folks we have on, but we have more and more joining on minute by minute, I'm sure. Uh, good morning, appraisers. My name is Brian Reynolds. You're watching the Appraisal Report webinar brought to you by the fine folks of Appraiser eLearning. And we have a special announcement. We're also being brought to you by our sister company, Agent eLearning. So thank you, Agent eLearning for helping us broadcast this. We would like to welcome all the real estate folks out there watching this program as well. So Appraiser uh, eLearning and Agent eLearning brings you these webinars once a month, free of charge, so the price is right. And this is actually a special edition webinar. This is not one of our regularly scheduled programs. Uh, we've got some breaking news and we want you to get involved. Change is coming right around the corner and you can actually help shape that change, or at least we're hopeful that you can. So that's why we wanted to have this special edition webinar. These webinars are all recorded and pretty much available right after the program uh, via YouTube. So if you haven't already subscribed, you'll see a subscribe button somewhere below me, maybe, I don't know, left or right, somewhere. Go ahead and click the subscribe button. That way you'll be in the know when we have a breaking news or a special edition webinar like we are today you'll get notification of that. And then finally, if you are interested on, in uh, being on the program or you know someone that would make a good guest, dial us up, send an email, send a text, let us know. We would be happy to invite those folks. This is all about giving back to the profession, giving back to the real estate industry, both the valuation and on the real estate side. We have a big variety of, of audience. We have investigators, we have regulators, we have appraisers, we have real estate agents, we have underwriters, we have loan officers, and we have folks from all over the world. We had someone from Africa chime in the other day. And so uh, we thank you for being here. We, uh, we are gonna continue these programs. We're trying to give you good information. And again, it's free of charge. I'm super, uh, super excited to have my guest here today, um, Hank Thomas. <laughs> I branded him as Mr. Ancy a while back. I think it stuck. Uh, he, uh, he is, uh, he's all about Ancy. He's all about measurement. He's all about the other standard too, since he wrote it, but, uh, but he likes the Ancy. And then finally, Miss Melissa Bond, and, and she, she's telling me she's Miss Ancy. So she's a big proponent of Ancy. She teaches on this on a regular basis. She is very, very articulate and knows her stuff. So super, super excited to have you guys on the program. Welcome both of you. 
Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So if somebody wanted to reach out and get a hold of either one of you, what would be, Melissa, the best way somebody could reach out to you? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, you can go to my website, ceinstructor.com, and you can email me directly from there. Or I have mbond at datastar.net, or you can call. I'm very responsive to phone calls or text messages if I'm not otherwise occupied. Uh, phone number for that would be 601-916-6501. Very cool, very cool. Mr. Ham, You can get me at 910-603-2690. Or Pinehurst Appraiser at Gmail or Home Measurement Specialist.com and send me an email from there. Very good, very good. Well, again, guys, thanks for being here. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about these individuals as the program wears on. Uh, they're great folks, they're very smart, and they've got a lot of good information to share. Both of them uh, are authors and half courses available and we'll give you some information on that a little bit. But we wanna get right into this because this is, uh, this is some interesting stuff and things, uh, things look like they're gonna change. I mean, uh, maybe whether we want them to or not. So we're under a time frame here, guys. We are under a time frame. Uh, a lot of you know what ANSI is. I, I hope that you know what ANSI is. It's American National Standard Institute. And they established a guide for the method for calculating square footage. It's known as the ANSI Z765, and currently it's the 2013 edition, and that's what it looks like, right? And it's copywritten. I can't just give you a copy, but you can find it. Just Google it. Well, they're in the midst of making a change or an update. So periodically, they get together, they form a committee. And they review the standard and say, and say, is it good? Is it bad? Should we change it? Should we leave it alone? And so we're in the midst of that right now. And so the uh, website that you can get to, and I don't know, Ben, if you can put a link up, but it's uh, homeinnovation.com, homeinnovation.com. And um, you can find out anything you want to know on, on this site about the, uh, the proposed changes. So, Hamp, uh, I'll start with you. Have you had a chance to look over all these proposed changes you're talking about? Yeah, and there's really, I think there was like 26 proposed changes, and there was only like seven people, I think, that actually suggested changes on there. And right, correct me on the date here, I think we've got till like March 23rd or 22nd, something like that, before we have to you know, that's the deadline. If you're going to send in any comments, you got to get them in before then. So we don't have a lot of time. And most, right. most of the things, what, what's the right date? It's the March 23rd. 23rd. The 23rd, mm -hmm. okay. All right. And most of the things are just updates and not, not, maybe not so significant. But one of the things on there is a pretty big deal. And I'm hoping that we can get a lot of people to contact them you know, before March 23rd and voice their opinion. And that's what we're going to talk about, I hope. Yeah, and we're going to talk about one in particular change that that I think we kind of agree. I don't know if we do or not, but but we'll find out in a minute. Uh, we're going to talk about one in, in particular change that, that at least we th agree on is going to probably cause a little stir in the industry. And I'm going to share my screen right now if I can do it correctly. And y'all let me know if you see it. Uh, has everybody got got this screen with the Home Innovation Research Lab. Is that the one showing? Yes. Okay. So guys, this screen that you're seeing right now is the website. If you go to, you don't have to put www, but if you go to homeinnovation.com forward slash Z765, homeinnovation.com forward slash Z765, it takes you right to the one regarding the standard and what we're talking about, all right? So as you scroll down this a little bit, you can see the draft standard right there. And this is, guys, I'm, I'm doing this real time. So if you get on your computer and do this, you're gonna be following along right with me. Here's the current 
guide over here on the right hand side, right? And then here is the new graph standard. And so if you click on that, it's gonna show you what the new standard, what they're so far, what they're talking about it looking like, okay? And we'll get to the big change in just a second, all right? It's, it's down here, I'll just give you a heads up. It's down here regarding a story and a half. You can see the illustration has changed compared to what it used to be, all right? So we'll, we'll get back into this in just a minute, but if you want to uh, get familiar with the proposed changes, there they are. There's a draft, and then there's also a public comment draft, and you might want to, you can get this right off the website. You might want to look at that as well, okay? So before we go any further, since we have several folks watching, I want to take a survey. And so let me, let me premise what this survey is. When you're measuring a house, let's say you go into a story and a half, okay? I know that's not an architectural style, but so, so, but it's a story and a half. You know what I'm talking about. And so you're upstairs and there's a slope ceiling and it comes down to a knee wall. And we ask folks all the time, where do you start your tape measure? And, you know, funny, we get a lot of funny answers. I start at four feet or I start where my shoulder hits or where my head hits. I always say if it's where your shoulder hits or head hits, send your shortest appraiser to come appraise my house. <laughs> It'll be bigger, right? You know, there's a standard. And the standard says you start at the five-foot mark, okay? So all appraisers watching or real estate agents, if you're measuring, and hopefully you are, when you start at that five-foot mark, the question I have for you, do you start at the five foot mark and measure across and whatever that dimension is what you use? If I measure across, it's 12 feet. I use 12 feet. Or do you add thickness for an outside wall? It's really not an outside wall. We're, we're in a finished attic, if you will, right? We're on the second level. Mm -hmm. So Benjamin is sending a link right now to everyone watching. You can click on that link and just say yes or no. Do you add, I think the question is, do you add the thickness of the wall? Did I get that right, Ben? Yes or no, yep. So again, I know you're gonna start at the five foot mark. You start at the five foot mark. My question is, do you add the thickness of the outside wall? Yes or no? That's what we wanna know. So everyone watching, if you could please just click on that survey link, take that survey real quick, and then we'll, we'll keep going. So um, while they're doing that, I'll just ask you guys. <laughs> uh, before I ask you what you do individually, uh, Ham, the people that you've taught classes to or the people you're around, what do you hear more often than not? Do they add the thickness of the wall or they don't? And I mean, it really is a, it depends if they're ever, <laughs> I, I mean, I get more questions about that than anything in the classes. We always say we don't add anything. And I, people say, well, why do you do that? ANSI says to add for the exterior wall. Well, the reason that we do it is real simple. In this sketch that's in the standard, I don't know if that shows up or not, but if you look at that sketch in the ANSI standard, the little red dotted lines show you that the measurement is on the inside walls. No addition for an exterior wall. Well, that's why the class is the way that it is. And when you get in, when you're trying to teach someone new, especially, and, you know, it's just so much easier. And you get in older homes where there's multiple slope ceilings around, the dimensions are usually more consistent if you stop the measurement at the right at the five foot point on the wall with no addition. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of interesting. And, and you know, we're not, we're not here to beat anybody up, okay? We're here to learn. And, and, and this webinar in particular, this special edition webinar is to get folks involved and, and, and hopefully, hopefully make a difference, right? Um, so, so let me share my screen real quickly because uh, I'm going to do what Hamp, Hamp just had up there. And so this is the current edition of ANSI, all right? So you can see it was approved in June of 2013. And I'm just going to scroll through here. 
Here you see ANSI procedures require periodic review to ensure standards are current and relevant. So periodically they do a review and that's where we're at right now, guys. The proposed is 2020 edition of ANSI. And now I'm gonna scroll down. I hope y'all are reading that this fast. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna go down to the slope. This is what, what uh, HAMP had up just a moment ago, right? Can you see that real good? So on the second level, it says the space where the ceiling is less than five feet is not counted right here and right here. So that means you would start your tape measure at the five foot mark and measure across. It does say at least one half the area has to have a ceiling height of seven feet or more. Nowhere on there do I see that you add the thickness of the outside wall. It doesn't say, it doesn't say to. Now it doesn't say not to. <laughs> so, so I guess you've got to, you've got to decide that for yourself. Melissa, on this, on the classes you have taught, uh, what do you find is more is the norm? Are appraisers, you know, taking it upon themselves to interpret that I need to add for the thickness of the wall? Or do they just measure five foot across and use that measurement? Well, the answer to that is unfortunately the same as what Hamp said. It does depend on the situation. But I will say this, that most folks would prefer to take in the studded wall simply because it is the, um, it's the standard for measuring where you, if you were to be on a first floor that does not have sloped ceilings or anything like that you're taking in that exterior wall. Now, I will say exactly what Hamp said, you know, I teach the standard. I teach this is what the standard says. But if you've ever been in one of my classes, you're going to get, this is the standard. This is what I do in practice, okay? Sure. Because I am a practicing appraiser and I do try to use logic. You know, logic prevails with, right. with right. us. Um, and I will say, Melissa Bond takes in the studs simply okay. because it's, it's the standard if you were measuring elsewhere. Okay. So I, I do that, but I teach the standard, but I go one step further and say, this is my practice. That's okay. just my practice. So, so you're adding for the thickness of a wall. For so, the stud wall, that's correct. Right. Right, so Hamp, when you're out measuring a property, what are you doing? Are you adding the thickness and of the wall? I don't not? add for okay. the interior wall. But okay. my whole point all along is that it doesn't really matter. You know, the problem with ANSI is the picture shows that you don't add for it, but right. everywhere else in the text, if you measure downstairs, you count the exterior wall. So logic would tell you why not do it upstairs. So yeah. I thought the most logical thing would be to add one line. Either, you know, put in ANSI, either you do or you do not add for the width of the exterior wall, and then we have no more confusion. But that's not what... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to get to the proposed change in just a minute. We're going to get there in just a minute. So, so that's kind of interesting. I have two experts on the program right now. One does it one way, another does it another way. So we can kind of see how this is a little ambiguous. This is a little confusing, isn't it? Um, you know, I've had people say, don't read into something. Don't, don't, you know, we as appraisers, and I think everybody agrees with this. We as appraisers, I, I call us analysts, because that's really what we are, right? We're analyzing the actions of market participants. I, I believe it's fair to say, it's not uncommon for us as analysts to overanalyze stuff. Right. right? Um, I have a trainee, I said, don't make a career out of this one assignment, right? We have a tendency just to continue to analyze and track. We're trying to solve the problem. We're trying to solve the real estate valuation problem. And it's not always easily solved, is it? Sometimes we have complex problems or complex assignments like Melissa has clients on. So, um, <laughs> so we just try to figure it out here, guys. Um, ben, do you have any results on that uh, survey? I don't know how quickly, I don't know if he's got those this quick yet or not, but it'd be interesting to see. Uh, yeah, let me share that. Give me just one second. I'll share them. Okay. Okay. He's, he's counting. He probably, you know, using his fingers and his toes. So we'll get, we'll, get, we'll give him a couple of extra minutes. Yes. Um, all right. You're going to have to blow it up for me because I can't see anything. 
So we have 42 people that played with us. Thank you guys for whoever did. 57.14% said no, they do not add the thickness of the outside wall. And 42.86% said yes, they do. So man, I mean, that's <laughs> pretty close, isn't it? Almost 50 50. So the majority is saying they do not add for the thickness of the wall. And if and they I, stand I, in front of a judge, they're both correct. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's it, right. That's because right. the standard doesn't say, does it? The standard doesn't say. But wouldn't it be really nice if we could all get on the same page? For instance, I don't care. I mean, I really don't care. I don't add. You know, I take it literally. I measure at the five-foot mark. I measure across, and that's the number I use. But if it's somebody is going to say, Brian, you should add for the thickness of the outside wall, okay, I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll start doing it that way. Now, my position is it's not an outside wall. Uh, if I poke my hole through, hand through that wall, if I punch through it, I'm not outside. I'm in the attic. But, but I don't care. If, if we want to say best practices would be to add the thickness, I'm okay with that. So I'm, I'm open to change. It, 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 did you hear that? I'm open to change. So many of us are not open to change. And we need to be. I'd like to remind our viewers, we do accept questions, comments. We have folks uh, coming in now. So let's read a couple of these. And in just a minute, we're going to show the proposed change. All right. So we've got a couple of questions or comments. Uh, Rafael says, no such thing here in Southern California. Typically, this is a finished attic here. Uh, well, I, I assume you're measuring, if it's a finished attic, I assume you're measuring the finished attic. Uh, if indeed it's finished and meets and conducive with the rest of the house as he did, that kind of stuff. Uh, Inland Chuck says, never seen that in Southern California. Okay, so I guess this is not a Cali thing, right? Here's a comment from Frederick. Remember, this is a builder's standard and a builder uses blueprints, which is a frame dimension. Now tell me what ANSI says about a CMU structure. Mr. Ancy, you have any idea what he's talking about? I'm not sure what a CMU structure is. Yeah, Melissa, you want to stab at that? Mm, I, I'm going to say the same. I'm not certain what a CMU structure is. If he Frederick, can help us out with that. Yeah, Frederick, you're, you're speaking Greek to us. But, but I can appreciate what he's saying about the builder standard. Right. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, Frederick. This has went way beyond just builders, okay? Uh in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, Kentucky has adopted it that appraisers will adhere to ANSI for the calculation of square footage and single family attached and detached structures. So we don't have a choice. I'm not a builder, but I'm an appraiser. But because Kentucky adopted it, I have to measure that way. I don't have a choice. And Melissa, is that true? That's correct. Mississippi is the same. In Mississippi, every appraiser is statutorily required to utilize ANSI or the American Measurement Standard for every home that they measure for valuation purposes. Okay, so Frederick just put back in, uh, thank you, Frederick, he put uh, concrete masonry unit. See, I just learned something. I, learn, I, I love learning new stuff. So we all just learned something. Thank you, Frederick, you were our teacher today. I appreciate that. A concrete mason- answer that. Yeah, concrete masonry unit. All right, Melissa, take it. Okay, I could probably answer that. And what I'll do is I'll parallel it, Frederick, if that's okay with you, to what we have that's typical in our area, which are the metal, um, commercial metal structures that are intended for residential use. And you typically have those 12 inch I beams. So you have uh, the thickness of your outer walls are basically a foot or just over. And we're doing exterior measurements. Now, let's just say if I was appraising that particular home and it was, as, as Brian is discussing, the story and a half. On the ground level, I would measure the perimeter, okay? So I'm taking in that full foot plus on every one of those exterior walls, which is not what we would call meaningful space, right? Um, it just, 
you know, has the structure on it. So when I got into the second floor, though, when I was doing something that was the story and a half with the sloped ceilings in my practice, I'm not talking about ANSI right now because I take my practice in the spirit of ANSI, if you could call it that, meaning the exterior walls are going to be measured. But if I got into the second floor that had the sloped ceilings, I would measure only to the five foot mark. And then I would add only for a studded wall, not for that one foot exterior, which we know to be the same as what's on the bottom. I would only add for the studded wall. And I only do that again in the spirit of ANSI. And I mean, we're talking about adding minute square footage mm -hmm. anyway. And remember, yeah. we're not doing an architectural rendering when we're doing our sketch. This is something for visual purposes only to assist the reader in understanding our valuation product that we're putting out. Hey, any, any uh, further comment? Yeah, Very I mean, well said, Melissa. I would do it the same way she would. You know, ANSI says the exterior wall, whether it's a vinyl sided brick or a concrete block, you know, whatever it is with the metal. I do yeah. it the same way. If you have a slope ceiling, I'd do it the same way she said. You know, yeah, Frederick, I, and, and I would uh, thank you for your question and, and also uh, clarity on your question. Uh, I, I think we all agree we would measure the primary, you know, level or the first level uh, exterior dimensions. And then if indeed that concrete house had a had a half story up above, I would I would do it the way they did less adding for the thickness of the wall. So I would start at the five foot mark, measure across, and that'd be my dimension. So it would be it, it would be the same. We have a couple other questions, guys, and then I want to I want to get into the proposed change because this is really why we're here today, and uh, and I want everyone watching to know what's happening and give them the opportunity to get involved. And please, I mean, I'm begging you get involved at this point. All right, so uh, B, hey B, I got a buddy named B. B said, when you do your living area adjustment, do you use the checkbox to not adjust for under a hundred square foot differential? If so, then why does this even matter? So what he's saying is there, the software he's, he's describing for those of you that, that don't know what we're talking about, he's putting a parameter in there that if the properties are close in square footage, let's say to the hundred square foot mark, he makes no adjustment whatsoever. Some people will put 50 foot, some people will put 25, some people will adjust if there's a two foot differential, right? And I will say this to you, B, I just got off the phone at 6.30 last night and if this young lady's watching, hello, I'm not gonna say her name, but she just got a threatening letter from an attorney who said, you appraised the property a year ago, the guy sold it now, they had an appraiser come out and found out that you're 112 square feet differential. So go ahead and write us a check for $2,000 because that's what he had to reduce his price in. And she, she said, what would you, what would you do? And I said, well, I'd tell the attorney where to go, but, but, but that's just me. So a uh, hundred square feet sometimes can be, I mean, this, this lady's finding that a hundred square feet differential she may be getting sued for, I mean, right now it's just a demand letter from an attorney. There's no, no suit issued yet, but she has, she sent me the letter. I read it. She has a demand letter for $2,000 because uh, between her and another appraiser, there's a differential of hundred square feet. Uh, what about the top floor of a true A-frame where the ceiling is the actual roof line, Hamp? Yeah, I'm the, I get my opinion on these things is we're the experts. I mean, if anybody's ever going to be a square footage expert, it's supposed to be appraisers. And that 100 square feet, it's almost like this is two different discussions. If you're measuring that house for the owner, they want to know what the true square footage is. And, you know, if it's 50 square feet different, it may depend on whether you're doing, you know, something at $100 a square foot or $500 a square foot. If that's 88 square feet difference, you know, that can be a lot of money on there. But I still think like the whole point is you're supposed to be measuring that house the very best that you can for your client. And that means measuring it as close as you can following a standard. 
All right, I'm going to ask two more questions and then we're going to uh, make a little announcement and we're going to get into the change because time's escaping us very, very quickly. And guys, we could we could spend all afternoon on on ANSI in general. And those watching, we, we may have another uh, broadcast on, on measurement in general. But today we want to talk about the proposed changes. So, so after these next two questions, I'm going to take a little pause and then we're going to get right into the proposed changes because this is really the big news. Okay, we're happy to do a future broadcast on measuring in general. But uh, Melissa, William is asking a question and William is asking, do you measure basements like a second floor? Well, okay, let's first off say I am in Mississippi and I am in South Mississippi. So we have very few basements, okay? So I will tell you what I do, and that's certainly, um, Hamp, I'd like for you to weigh in on that, and Brian, you as well, because I know that you have more basements than we do. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm in a basement that has inferior ceiling heights, meaning below the seven foot, then there's your answer right there, okay? Now, if I'm in a basement area that has um, over seven foot ceiling heights, you know, I'm not really seeing any basements that have any dead space, you know, meaning uh, from the five foot mark down. I'm just, I'm not seeing sloped ceilings in a basement. Now, y'all may have something like that in your area, but here in Mississippi, it's not happening, people. Yeah. <laughs> Hamp, Hamp, Hamp what, what, what do you want to put in with that? Uh, yeah, the question is, do you measure a basement like a second floor? And the short answer is yes. I mean, I'm doing the basement the same way. It's from exterior walls. You know, there's mm -hmm. not really a sloped ceiling issue there, but it's measuring. Yep. All you got is inside measurements that I add for the exterior walls. Yeah, William, if I'm, if I'm looking at a house and it's a thousand square feet and the basement is a full basement, then the basement would be a thousand square feet. If it has a second level, it's a full second level, no open foyer, no sloped ceilings, nothing like that, it would have a thousand square feet on the second level. So how I would report that is it's a 2000 square foot home with a thousand square foot basement, unfinished or finished. And that's how I would handle that. Okay, we're gonna move on. We do have another question. And, and if we have time, uh, P. Plone will try and get to that. I, I will just say this, that question is addressed in, uh, in Hamp's class. So if you wanna take one of Hamp's uh, uh, classes, that, that question is answered in detail, but I wanna get I want to get to the uh, the proposed changes because this is pretty important stuff. Uh, I want to take a, a quick, quick little uh, pause and let you know that you're watching the appraisal report webinar brought to you by the fine folks of Appraiser eLearning and Agent eLearning and all the agents out there watching today. Welcome. Uh, we've had a big audience of agents and regulators and appraisers and underwriters and loan officers and processors and AMCs and a whole bunch of other folks. And, uh, and we welcome all new viewers to the program. Um, that being said, uh, Melissa, what's your favorite color? Today, it's going to be brown. Brown. And Hamp, what's your favorite number? Two. Two? Two. So what we're going to do is we're going to go crazy, and we're going to give a, Ben, help me out here, 15%. We're going to give a discount. And the discount code is going to be Brown2. And that's going to be for any of our classes on any of our platforms. So if you're an agent and you need some education, hop on over to Agent eLearning. If you're an appraiser and you need appraiser education, hop on to Appraiser eLearning. Use the discount code Brown2. And you'll get a 15% discount on any of our classes. Uh, Melissa has a, a great class there on appraising complex property. AMP has multiple classes, ANSI, public records. I think you've got a video course now, right, AMP? You, you've got all kinds of stuff coming out to you. So uh, some good content there. If you need some CE, check out Agent eLearning. Check out Appraiser eLearning. Guys, we bring these webinars to you free of charge. And uh, we just are, are very, very hopeful that when the time comes that you need some CE, that you remember us here at Appraiser eLearning and Agent eLearning. With that being said, let's move on. So the, Here's the proposed change, okay? And I'm gonna show them real quick on a shared screen where they can get this stuff. And then uh, Hamp, I think that you also have a, a little sketch for. So everyone pay close attention. I'm gonna share my screen again. 
And again, this is the website that you can go to to find out more details of what we're talking about. And, and while I have this up here, I just want to let, let our viewers and audience know, we did reach out to the Home Innovation Research Labs. We did reach out to those folks and invite them to participate on this webinar. Uh, ben can, can answer that for sure, but I don't think we got a response, did we, Ben? Yeah, unfortunately, we and, and I understand they're all busy folks. Uh, we're all busy, 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 but we uh, we certainly uh, offered uh, the opportunity for some of somebody there, whether it be staff or the chair of the committee or someone on the committee to participate. And they didn't decline; they just just didn't respond. So uh, we're we're happy to do another one and have them on so that we could get their perspective. But if you go to homeinnovation.com forward slash z seven six five you can see all of this cool information. And down here, you'll see the graph standard. You'll see the public proposed report, P P P R, which I'll pull that up in a minute. Here's your public comment submission form. And you see that it closes March 23rd. So if you click on that, that's where you're gonna register as a new user and you'll have the opportunity to actually voice your concerns, okay? And I don't know how to get rid of that now. <laughs> That's the problem doing this real time. All right, so now I'm going to go back to the draft standard and I'm going to click on the draft standard. This is the a draft of the new 2020 standard. And you can see it right here, ANSI Z765-2020. And so as we scroll down, it, there are some, some good things, I think, that, that they're changing. One was uh, regarding the definition of square footage because... They were talking about uh, heated. Gene McCarty brought this up. I think it was really good. Look here. They're going to change. Um, do not include bare or painted concrete. We have floor coverings these days that people are making concrete floors, their floor covering as well as the floor, right? And so they, they're taking out the word or painted concrete. If you have a really nice painted, uh, down here they're changing and putting uh, stamping or other methods. You know, we, we continue to evolve as, um, as uh, consumers and consumers demand and, and what they're accepting as finished floor coverings. And you'll see painted or stamped concrete all the time now. Look down here, finished stairs are suitable for year round use. So year round use, some areas like Hawaii don't need a heat source an elevator shaft, laundry chute. So you can read these yourself. I think there are a lot of good changes, but I wanna get down here to the major change, okay? And I wanna ask my experts on the panel today what their thoughts are. I'm gonna come down to this one and you can see the old illustration. If you look at the 2013 edition of USPAP, excuse me, of ANSI, this is the sketch you'll see. Well, they're gonna take that out. This is the proposed change. They're gonna take this out and replace it with two sketches here. And so I, I don't even know, help me, help me interpret this, but it looks like the red line is where they're saying you measure or you count, right? So on the, on the main level, you see outside wall. Up here, you're gonna go in and you're gonna start at the five foot mark, area below five feet, it's not counted. So this means this, I'm taking this to mean that this, on the inside goes all the way over to here. One inside wall and one outside wall. But they're wanting you to measure across and include the thickness of the outside wall. Now look at this one, this is this is really a good one. And if we have any builders on here, feel free to chime in. I, I was told their thought process with this is because of what's called a fire stop. And that may make sense to builders, I, I, you know, I, I get it. But I think it's gonna confuse a lot of folks in the country that uses this standard on a regular basis. So, so look at this. On this example, we have a story and a half. We're measuring based on the red. Here we're starting at the inside five foot mark. We're measuring across and we're not stopping at the five foot mark on this side. We're going to the outside, which is not really the outside. <laughs> you can it's see this is actually attic. Go ahead, Melissa, mean? what? It would be the imaginary studded wall. Yeah, it's, it's an imaginary wall. So, so 
what this, at least how I interpret it, and if my experts interpret it differently, or if anybody viewing it interprets it differently, please let us know, okay? But what I'm taking this to me is that we, earlier in this broadcast, I said, do you add for the thickness of the wall? And the question was yes or no. Over 50% said they do not. And so what this is looking like to me is they want you to start at the five foot mark, don't add for the thickness, measure across, and on the other wall where you hit the five foot mark, add the thickness of that wall. So the proposed change is you only add the thickness of one wall. Now, again, I wish I had somebody from the committee or, or the, the chair or somebody could explain the rationale to you. Maybe, maybe it makes more sense then. Yeah. I, I think I remember no, them I'll, saying, I'll, 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 <laughs> I, I think I remember them saying, at least wherever there are, there's, there's a construction standard of what's called a fire stop. You gotta have a fire stop there and it's gotta be insulated. In some instances, they even have an outside wall covered. I get it, I get it. So for all intents purposes, it's an outside wall in, in their thinking. I get that, that makes sense. But guys, let's be consistent here. Either let's add thickness for both, both walls or let's not add thickness at all. I think if we're gonna, if we're gonna change a standard to where you measure across and only add thickness of one wall, we're gonna have a lot of confused folks out there. We already have a lot of confused we already folks. Have. Yeah. So I don't know, uh, Melissa, what are your thoughts on this? Am I interpreting this right? Well, from, from what I can see, we're looking at, and I'm, I'm gonna refer to the left um, the left sketch, okay? okay the one yeah. that's on the left. When we're looking at that, you already have a constructed knee wall, okay? If that's their rationale, it's because you have a constructed knee wall and then defined attic on the other side. If that's their reason why you take that stud in, but the other side would be the imaginary knee wall. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. not there. So they're saying, since it wasn't built, let's not take it in. Right. Um, that would be the only thing that I could say could perhaps be an explanation for that. But I'm gonna stand with what my, my, I first said, my practice is, it may be an, it may not be a wall there at the five foot. It's an imaginary wall, but I would take it in as take in those studs as though it were there because something has been constructed a little further away, but it's below the five foot. So right, that's right. the only thing that I could think that they may have been thinking when they came up with this add for one wall, but don't add for the imaginary wall. Does that make sense to either of you? Yeah, yeah. Hamp, I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I get my, I don't see the logic in this at all. I got to tell you the truth. This is the most confusing measurement that we already have. I get <laughs> yeah. emails and calls every week, you know, arguing one way or the other. And here right. the proposal is it's going to get more confusing. Now, right. I don't care whether we add a wall or we don't add a wall, it makes no difference but it would only take one line in the ANSI standard. And that's what I'm hoping everybody will do. Send in a comment and ask them either, you know, yes or no, but don't do one wall. I just can't see how <laughs> a new agent or a new appraiser, how do you explain to them that we're going to use one wall, whether there's a wall in place there or not, we're going to take something already confusing. And instead of making it better, we're going to make it worse. Yeah, and that's yeah. going to make everyone more in that um, half one way or half the other. It's it's adding confusion to, you know, exponentially. When, as Hamp said, it could be a single one-liner that gives clarification on this. And, well, and it, <laughs> know, folks want to do what's right, but they need what's right to be laid out for us. Exactly. Yeah, and, and you know what 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 complicates it is how much thickness do you add? I mean, I mean there are, there are some walls. That, I mean, somebody talked about the concrete masonry wall earlier, right? So, mm -hmm. are we adding four inches or five inches or six inches or eight inches? And depending on which house I go in, I might need to alter the amount of the size of the thickness of the wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, my head's exploding here, right? 
And so, uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's why we brought this uh, special edition webinar right now to, to bring this awareness out. You know, a lot of times things change and by the time the public knows about it or the users, right, appraisers, real estate agents, and those un impacted by the users like mortgage companies, underwriters, processors, AMCs, PMI <laughs> companies, regulators, you know, the change is already made. And, and we don't, you know, it's already made for us. We, we don't have a voice. We don't, we don't have the ability to get involved. And right now we have the ability to get involved. We have a short window. So everybody watching, I don't know, we've got a couple of hundred, maybe 300 people watching, write a letter, get on that website and type something right there, make a phone call, overwhelm them with phone calls. I don't know. Give them a call, say, stop, don't do it. Or if you like it, say, go team. You guys are doing a great job. And keep in mind that, that that all of those folks, you know, we need to we need to enter it with respect. These folks are not paid, at least I don't think they're paid. Uh, they're volunteering their time. They're trying to do what what they think is right. So you know, there's there's a right way and wrong way of approaching that. Um, here's a here's a comment. What is the thickness of the wall? An exterior has different thicknesses. That's what she's talking about. Um, is it a two by four or two by six? Is this platform framing or balloon framing? Yeah, mm -hmm. and we don't see a lot of balloon framing anymore. We used to, that's how houses used to be built. More so now it's platform. You build up your platform and then you keep going. So um, whoever whoever typed that, at Frederick again. I like it, Frederick, man. Maybe we ought to have him on next time. Uh, so so what, uh, what, let's, let's do another poll. And um, all those watching, we're gonna give you a chance to participate right now. Okay, so Benjamin, if you can get the next poll ready, this poll is going to ask you guys what um, what you think should occur. Okay, and um, so I don't know that they really do an exposure draft, but they they do put this on their website. You saw it; it is open for public comment, so they will look at your comment. So we're putting a survey. Maybe we'll just send the results of this survey to, to the Home Innovation Lab. But I think we could do that, can't we, Ben? Um, so, Ben, would you hop on here and tell me what this survey question says? Because I'm, I'm old and I already forgot. I had a birthday yesterday, so I'm old now. And, uh, yeah, let me, just, let me just share my screen. Hang on a second. But there's got some new coffee three mugs. Possible options. You see that? There you go. Can you blow it up a little bit? A little bit. Yeah, so, so here's the next survey, guys. And if you, if you got the link on your screen, go ahead and click it. And let's get this one going. Uh, the best method to measure rooms with slope ceiling is at the five foot point. And then here's your options. Number one, add for the width of both walls. So that's the thickness of the walls we're talking about. Oop, I'm sorry about that. Killing me. Number two, do not add for the thickness of the exterior wall. In other words, just keep it keep it the way it is stated, right? It says start at the five foot mark measure across and that's your dimension, dimension. So option two would be not to add for any thickness of the wall. Option one is to add thickness of both walls. And then option number three would be what it looks like they're proposing to me in that you would add the thickness of only one exterior wall. So we're watching, we're asking the near 300 folks watching or whatever number it is, uh, what would you like to see done? And again, we've got we've got uh, a wide variety of audience members here. So when we submit this to Home Innovation, we'll let them know this is not just appraisers. This is appraisers and realtors and builders and lenders and and users of of appraisal services and and real estate professionals in general. All right. Uh, right so it'll be interesting to see thing? what those are. Absolutely, jump in here. Okay, I just wanted to say one thing because I wanted to be sure and clarify what I had said earlier, that when I add, when there is an imaginary wall at that five foot, my practice is to add a studded wall, not the exterior of the home, because the okay. exterior of the home, of course, not being there. So, um, and I know the questions that you're asking is to the exterior wall. So I just wanted to make certain that um, right, you know, right, right. I only add for that imaginary studded wall. And gotcha. in answer to Frederick's question, just talking about practice, the assumption is it's it's just the three and a half inch studs. 
and and the drywall or the panel board, whatever's there. Five tenths That's or six thickness. inches like that. Right. Yeah. So let me uh, let me share my screen one more time, and I want to show another area because we're 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 starting to run out of out of time here. Um, Jana just said, "Don't add for thickness." My rationale is because you are guessing at the measurement anyway. Thank you, Jana, for that comment. So I'm going to share my screen again real quick. And um, so this is the uh, again the proposed change, right? Uh, I want to come up. I want that thing to go away. There we go. I want to come up to this one, I think. So again, this is the, the main screen when you go to homeinnovation.com forward slash Z765. Please, everybody watching, go on this site today and uh, take a look at it, dive into it. If you have any questions, call Hamp, Melissa, or me, or call the Home Innovation Lab. Call them directly, right? Uh, here is the public proposal report. I wanted to just show that very quickly. Obviously, you can get on this and look at it on your own time. But this is what Hamp was talking about earlier, okay? This is, there's all the chair, the, or the committee folks. I'm, I'm on the committee, right? Uh, you've got 26, 26 items that were presented, and then two additional were presented by the committee. So there's 28 proposed changes. And you can see most of them were not approved. Disapproved, 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 disapproved. Right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven potential changes to ANSI. I highly encourage you, if you're watching this program, to go look at these proposed changes. What did I say? There was seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven proposed changes. Guys, if nothing gets said, they're, they're probably all just going to be approved, right? The one that we've been concentrating on today um, is number 11. And if you go down to number 11, um, you can see uh, you can see the results of the vote. Uh, you can see the request for the change. They approved as modified. They implemented these two sketches. Um, seven agreed with it, two disagreed. So two people voted against it. And Brian, seven can I just say one thing? Jean McCarty, I don't know who she is, but she's the one that made the most suggestions. So to her, I say thank you. Yeah, so absolutely. Really and Jean, Jean's great. Uh, Melissa knows Jean. She's down in her neck of the woods. And Jean, uh, Jean serves on the committee. And uh, Jean is very involved and very instrumental in, in, in trying to help appraisers. Um, uh, so, so you can see a couple of comments here from a couple of the folks. Um, I strongly recommend this change not be made. That was, that was me. And then you can see what this guy has to say. And by the way, I'm here on this webinar as Brian Reynolds, an appraiser, an educator. I, I'm not here in the capacity of a committee member. And I want to make that very, very clear. Uh, this is, this is a hot topic, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And it's something we all need to get involved in and, and, um, uh, Brian, could I bring up a second one that I'm, I know that we don't have time to discuss right now, but if um, listeners would take an opportunity to look at log number two um, and comment on that um, in, in favor or, or whichever, but please comment on that because that's one that I think their clarification has added confusion. I, I don't see I don't see that being as defining as maybe they had intended. So and and Hamp, you're right. Jane McCarty is in my state, and Jane has worked tirelessly on this as as Brian has. So um, I I think kudos to her. Same. Yeah, and 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 I want to just say this: um, the folks that I I got to visit with uh, were all very professional, very good people. I, I don't think anyone is maliciously trying to hey, let's let's make people's lives harder. <laughs> I don't. I certainly don't think that's the case here. Um, but uh, I, I think that if you're passionate about these proposed changes, either way, if you support them, great. If you don't, that's okay too. 
uh, get involved. They're asking for public comment. We have till March 23rd, and that's it. Time's up. So uh, please take a couple of minutes. You can make a difference if you get involved, and that's what we're asking you to do. Regardless if you agree with me or Hamp or Melissa, doesn't matter. Uh, get involved. Yep, they're going to read these comments, so whatever you send in is going to make a difference. But there was only, we said, like 26 or 28 uh, suggested changes. It would be nice if we could get at least 100 people, you know, to voice an opinion on slope ceilings, because otherwise this is just going to go through, and I'm afraid the confusion is going to get worse instead of better. Yeah, it's it's in my opinion, it's gonna it's gonna create some issues, especially in the states that require us as appraisers to adhere. Uh, and then there's some real estate jurisdictions. I know uh, my town in Owensboro, Kentucky, the Board of Realtors uh, made an MLS change that says the appraiser, excuse me, the the listing agent is not able to say square footage per PVA, and PVA is the same as assessors in most most of the folks listings area. So you can't put on there. Square footage is based on assessor's data. No, you've got to ensure that this house, the, the, the listing information that you have in your listing in the MLS has to reflect square footage based on ANSI. Now, it doesn't say the real estate agent has to measure, but it does say the agent broker are responsible to ensure that the advertised amount of square footage is based on ANSI. So, uh, so it's very interesting, and uh, and some changes are going to occur. Hey, guys, we're about out of time. Uh, one last time, I want to remind our viewers, if you need some CE, what did we do? We did brown, too. Today, her favorite color was brown. I think last time it was something else. It may change day to day. I don't know. I'm a but typical woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You're entitled to your change. Uh, brown, two is a discount code. Melissa has a course on complex uh, appraising complex properties. Uh, HAMP has a, a handful of classes, both on agent e-learning and appraiser e-learning. So if you need some insight into that, go check those out. It's called Brown 2. Any closing thoughts, Melissa? Well, my, my closing thoughts would really be to echo what um, HAMP just said. It is, it is vital that each of us being um, stakeholders, being users of uh, the ANSI standard that we express our opinion. It is vital. Whatever your opinion is, please take this opportunity because this is an exposure draft, much like um, the, you know, the foundation puts out from the standards board and qualifications board. This is your opportunity time. And let's look back. The standard has only been um, edited twice now. You know, we had a 2003 version, a 2013. Now we'll have a 2020. So we're looking at another, say, seven to 10 years of we're under this. And as Brian said, his state and my state, Mississippi, it's all important to us. So please um, let your voice be heard. This is your opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you, Melissa. Hamp? Uh, it affects us all. And if you ever, you know, this is the perfect time. We've got something that could be made really simple with one line, yes or no. And so please, please take five minutes, you know, and make a comment, whatever your opinion is. But please, this stuff really is going to make a difference and it's going to happen soon. So thanks for hey. Thank you very much to my guest. Uh, ben Maxwell, did you get any results from that last poll? I'm, and we may not be able to have those on the air, but. Uh... Uh... For all of those that have wondered what Ben looks like, there he is. So, so, so what's our results here? We've got, can you blow that up again, my friend? Remember I'm old, I can't see. We had 53 people participate. Um, we've got a bunch of blue that says do not add four. So that would be do not add the thickness of the wall. 60, is that 60%? Mm -hmm. We have zero people that are voting for the proposed standard. <laughs> and we've got, I don't know, maybe 40% of the folks. So 40% of the folks are saying um, add the thickness. 
60% of the folks are saying don't add anything. 0% of those surveyed said don't do half and half for crying out loud. Isn't so that great. interesting? Yeah, yeah, it's great. And thank you for all the folks, the 53 folks that uh, participated in our survey. We really appreciate you doing that. That's what we're here for, guys. So we'll pass this information over to the Home Innovation Lab. Hopefully they'll receive it and, and take that under advisement. Um, again, thank you for watching. and like to thank uh, Agent eLearning for joining in and, and helping us produce this today. Uh, always thankful to Appraisery Learning to bring you and I together. Uh, thank you to my guests, Ms. Melissa Bond and Hint Thomas. Check out their courses on the platforms as described previously. Until next time, I'm your host, Brian Reynolds. You've been watching the Appraisal Report webinar. Thanks, and until next time, happy appraising.